There's a street in downtown Hamilton that travels east-west. At least for cyclists it does. For motorists, it's a one-way street. There is a two-way cycle track on it for most of the street, and the remainder is an unsigned bike route. It can take you all the way from the Caddy Access Trail to pretty much Dundurn Street. The route in question is Hunter Street. Let's get cycling westbound. We begin cycling downbound on the Ketty Access Trail. I figured I'd start off quite a fair distance away from Hunter Street, just so you could see a little bit of the artwork off to the side, and also some artists touching up the artwork. I thought that was kind of neat to see the day that I rode down the Ketty Access Trail. And also, here is West Avenue South. If you want to connect to the bike lanes on Victoria Avenue, you can take West Avenue South. Or you could go to this intersection and make a left-hand turn. There's still a few issues with this intersection, so that's why I tried to take West Avenue. When there are cars here, they don't always realize that it's an all-way stop. And so you'll get there, it'll be your turn to go, and a car cuts you off because they don't realize, hey, it's an all-way stop. So, unfortunately, there is that issue. I'm not sure. Maybe there's not a sign <laughs> saying, hey, bike lanes. It should be obvious that there's a bike lane because it's painted through the intersection. And, yeah. And just pass by Ferguson Avenue. That is one way to connect to the Escarpment Rail Trail. There is a tunnel under the train tracks. And if you don't feel comfortable cycling through that tight little tunnel, there is Walnut Street. And so, yeah, you can turn left onto Walnut Street and connect to Young. And then from Young, you can connect to the Escarpment Rail Trail. And yeah. And here in this intersection, the bike lanes aren't painted green. It would be nice if they were painted green. Sometimes it can be a little confusing, like, what's with all these arrows? And if it's painted green, then people have a better understanding that, oh, this is a bike route. Because you see the green, you go bikes. I know in, I think, Europe they do red. Here in Canada, red usually signifies buses. And green usually represents bicycles. So yeah, here, I got the green here. This is a little bit more of a major street. I don't have arrows for every single street. I've mentioned it before that I'm only going to try to do major, like true major streets. Like here is John Street South and James Street is a major street. Those both have the little red triangles to indicate, hey, maybe don't cycle on these ones. But it's good to know so you can kind of get your bearings of where you're at. And so any other street names that uh, don't have the little triangles, they're usually part of the cycling network or sort of part of the cycling network. Some of them are unsigned bike routes and so they won't have any signs whatsoever. And some also are, they should be part of the cycling network. And one thing that I would really like to see is using paint for communication. And you can see it here in this intersection, people on James Street driving through you see the green paint. It is a very dominant visual reminder to let you say, oh, a cyclist could be coming through here. Obviously, they shouldn't on a red light, but, uh, you know, sometimes people, they're flying through last second. It's technically a red light or it's just on the amber and starting to turn red and they're flying through. The green kind of reminds them, hey, maybe, maybe slow down. Someone could be coming through. And so, yeah, paint is a great visual reminder. The zebra crossings are a great visual reminder of, hey, stop. <laughs> Definitely at any stop sign, I think we should have zebra crossing. And that's just helped your visualization of, like, this is a crosswalk for pedestrians. You have a stop sign. Stop. Don't enter this. That being said, 
I have definitely seen cars stopping in the zebra crossing at a stop sign, but it does help a little bit, and any little bit of help in communication is always a good thing. And yeah, another form of paint as communication would be sharrows. You're going to very briefly see a sharrow towards the end of the two-way cycle track. And it's going to show you, hey, the bike route, the unsigned bike route, make a right here. And so you'll see that very shortly. And yeah, sharrows should not be anything other than wayfinding. So they should not even be called sharrows. They should be called wearos. Uh, I'm going to trademark that. Not really. But uh, yeah, they should be wearos. And it's just a way for you to say, oh, this is the bike route. And we need to use that a lot more. Because not always, you're, you're not always going to be looking at signs off to the side of the road. Drivers and cyclists, anyone that's using the road itself, is going to be focusing their attention on the surface of the road. And so, yes, it's great to have those signs because they last longer than paint. And they don't get covered by snow. But, yeah. We need to start putting paint as communication. We need to have, like, the double solid yellow lines on the curbs where you can't park. Put those in. Uh, I think Britain does that. And, yeah. So, here we are at the end of the two-way cycle track. When traveling westbound, we're going to make a left-hand turn, and we're going to continue on Hunter Street. But if you are traveling eastbound, you're actually going to be on Canada Street, which is off to the right of us. And this green crossing is actually for people traveling eastbound. It's not for when you're traveling west. There's this weird crossover. I've only ever had it happen once before, where I'm going straight and the person is turning left and they cut you off, and you really shouldn't be doing that. Oh yeah, here is that little sharrow off to the side. Just kind of, it's more of a wero, really, because it's saying, hey, turn onto this street, get off Queen, Queen's not safe, take Hunter. And that's the only sharrow that is on this road, and it's also not a signed bike route. And so, yeah, wherever there's bike routes, Put down sharrows as wayfinding. I'm going to keep calling them sharrows because I think most people are familiar with the term sharrow. And yeah. Again, zebra crossing, just to remind you that, hey, people cross there. There is no stop sign there, but that's fine. It's a yield. So you have the zebra crossing, you have the little shark teeth yield signs indicating, hey, this is where you should yield from. And this is where people are going to cross. And here we are at Lock Street. If you are going, say, across the highway, you might want to take Lock Street. If you're cycling up, say, Dundurn, you talked about it in the Dundurn video, there is a detour where you actually go all the way to Lock Street, cross Main and King, and then you go through the park, and then you can join up with the bike lanes on King Street later on. And yeah, that will be talked about a little bit more in the next video. Just up ahead, Hunter Street ends, Richmond Street begins. This is the only time that I've ever had this situation on Hunter Street. I, uh, I travel Hunter Street quite a bit because I go up and down the escarpment and I take the Chidoak Trail quite a bit. And so yeah, I'll cycle all the way down to Dundurn and then from Dundurn you go up to Chidoak. And yeah, we're on Richmond Street. Really, this is just a continuation of Hunter Street. It's a one-way street, much like Hunter Street was. And here is Hill Street. There's playground off to the side. There's a dog park off to the side. There's community gardens. I would love to live in this neighborhood if I could afford it. But oof, housing prices in Hamilton, that's a, that's a topic for another video, that's for sure. And here at Dundurn Street... Making the left-hand turn is probably the most difficult thing. Don't get too close to the center line, because you will you will have cars going southbound wanting to turn onto Hill Street. 
and it's a very narrow, it's a bit of a pinch, and there's a bit of a blind spot. You can't see it in this video, but the railing of the bridge is definitely a blind spot, and so you actually have to kind of sit even further out. But uh, yeah, that is going to be it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one where we travel Canada and then Hunter Street going east. Until then, take care and stay safe.